Thank you so much for staying with us, everyone. Before you know it, 2019 will be here. At least three states will conduct governorship election uh, within the next one year. Anambra State, Ocean State, and of course, Ekiti State. And some of these states, in fact, these three states do not have resident electoral commissioners. They are the ones who are responsible for conducting elections and the day-to-day -day running of uh, INEC offices in the state. The presidency who is responsible for appointments of some of these key INEC rules had failed to do so. And my guest, Mr. Clement Nwanko, an expert in election and issues of policy in governance, has been talking to us from our Abuja studio. Let's continue the conversation now. Uh, one we wonder... Why is could the presidency, you know, the imagination is that if these roads are that important, why is it, why does it take this long and why will the presidency be waiting for this long to make appointments into such critical roles? Well, so many things have taken too long, Shaun, and uh, I think it's really sad for the country that we are moving at the pace we are moving. Uh, the country is almost at a standstill. Uh, but with respect to elections, it is really important if our democracy uh, is to survive that we do have uh, those responsible for oiling and running the engines of democracy uh, to be well equipped and to be very well in place uh, to do the job that they should do. Um, resident electoral commissioners are very important. They, like I said, uh, run the states uh, in addition uh, or with support from the administrative officers in the states and, of course, with direction uh, from the uh, national headquarters of INEC. But certainly you do need uh, resident electoral commissioners. A lot of them are very experienced. A lot of them understand elections. They bring value to elections, and they are able to advise the national office of, of INEC on what needs to be done on the politics of the area and what uh, is required to be done. And the Constitution provides in the third schedule that uh, resident electoral commissioners be appointed for every state. They are appointed by or nominated by the president. The Senate confirms it. And we think it's really important that these uh, nominations be made uh, by the president. We do have a president, e even if he's acting uh, in office today, he should make those nominations and the resident electoral commissioners uh, should be screened by the Senate and set to work immediately. What are the uh, kind of uh, persons uh, being usually appointed as resident electoral commissioners? They are, of course, uh, non-political appointments. These are uh, uh, non-partisan appointments. And one we wonder, that's how, uh, what, what sector of the society uh, do these people really come from? And what kind of energy does it take the presidency to appoint these kind of people, for example? Of course, in addition to the usual requirements of persons of proven integrity, they should not be bankrupt, uh, they should not have a criminal record, uh, there is a requirement that they be nonpartisan. They shouldn't be members of uh, political parties. These are not difficult to find. There are lots of Nigerians who do not belong to political parties, who are not partisan, and who really want to work in the interest of this country to ensure that democracy reigns. And I think that um, the, the, the president, the acting president, need to work on this issue and get these Nigerians who will be making the sacrifice of working as work in the states. Uh, let's not forget also that even at the national headquarters of INEC, there is one vacancy at this time. Uh, the uh, the uh, second um, national commissioner from the southeast, that position was recently vacated uh, a few months ago uh, in October last year and remains vacant as we speak. These vacancies should not be allowed to, to exist because uh, all of these people uh, come with knowledge, with interests that or, or sections of the country that they represent, and this administration needs to ensure that these vacancies, uh, which create damage to uh, democracy, should not really be allowed to continue. Um, maybe I should show Nigerians uh, some of these positions and some of the tenure of these people uh, when some of them entered into office and when uh, they left office from all the 36 states of the Federation. There you go. Uh, if you look up, uh, a lot of them are appointed and the tenure ended, some in 2015, 
some in 2016 and uh, some of them in 2017. And all of these people are uh, some people who have uh, been at INEC for four years uh, and above, and some of them who have ended their tenure. Uh, one will be wondering, what could be, what could be the implication of uh, the non-appointment of these, the recs into these offices? Well, first, there's a violation of the Constitution in leaving these vacancies. These are constitutionally mandated positions, uh, and the president or acting president need to understand that these uh, constitutionally mandated positions should be filled. Uh, not filling it represents a violation of the Constitution. Uh, they represent reasons for being appointed to those positions, and those reasons need to be respected by the administration. Again, these are nonpartisan positions. Uh, beyond the fact, of course, that there are several other even partisan positions that have not been filled, uh, which creates a crisis as we speak, these ones are very important positions to fill. The country should not come to a standstill uh, as we speak. Uh, there are several things. The Constitution has had an acting president appointed or uh, suggested or uh, put in place by the president himself going off uh, on, the, on his medical uh, treatment, and he has appointed uh, an acting president to be in place who should show full responsibility for running the country uh, because he does have the constitutional powers to make these appointments. Uh, Mr. Wanko, you've been following some of these issues. Why has it been so difficult for appointment, I mean, with appointment in, in this country since uh, the Buhari regime came into, into force? Uh, we, we had each, up until now, we still have an acting chairman of the EFCC. Uh, the the uh, justice on organ uh, appointment came with a lot of controversies. Uh, the appointment of the national commissioners in INEC came with a lot of controversies. And now it is the Rex. What kind of seriousness, uh, uh, or what, what exactly do the, does this administration look like when it comes to democratic values? Well, I think this administration has run at very low energy, uh, which means that uh, things that it should do, it hasn't done, uh, both in terms of running the economy, and we saw what happened with how the economy was uh, reduced to what it is today simply because government has failed to take decisions that it should take. Uh, with appointments, there are several vacancies, and this is nothing to do with INEC. There are several vacancies that require that people of competence be appointed. This administration has failed to do so. So the momentum, the energy that this administration needs to have to run has been very lacking, and the country has suffered for it. Uh, and this is clearly unacceptable. Mm -hmm. You don't get elected to a position and you really, quite frankly, run the country aground. And that's where we are today. Many thanks, uh, Clement Uwanko, the convener, election situation room in Nigeria. We do know that our democratic values are very important for our society to move forward since 1999. We've been building the Nigerian democracy. How far that we go lies in our hands. And so a lot of people will come together to say today to the Nigerian president, rise up and make this appointment so that the constitution will not be flouted. Many thanks for being part of the program. On behalf of the team, I'm sure Kimale. Bye for now.